So today's sponsor for the webcast is SQLGrease.com. SQL Grease is a monitoring tool that takes a kind of different approach to doing monitoring. It's totally free for seven days. Period. So this is really neat they, because you can switch around to different servers. You can just go add an account, set it up for seven days, and it's totally free. And then you can come back later and then go back and look at a different server. So it's interesting if you want to go look at different servers. I know a lot of people only can afford to monitor servers for short periods of time. That's really useful. Then they price it based on how much monitoring data you have. The more data that you want to keep, the more, the higher that your price goes. So it's a really affordable price point and they have really cool cloud capabilities. So for example, if you want to take an on-premises SQL server and you want to go, how much do I think this is going to cost up in the cloud? And when I go to the cloud, which queries are going to be my most expensive based on my Azure's DTUs, they can tell you that kind of thing. So it's totally free to get started. You can go grab a uh, trial version of it at sqlgrease.com, and it really is totally free for seven days worth of monitoring. Then you can just keep uh, switching around to different servers for each seven days. So in a very related topic, this week's uh, webcast is about baselines. I know that for ages, everybody always told me, you have to capture baselines. You should know what your baselines are. How are you going to know if things are different if you don't have a baseline? But I'm like, well, what do I capture a baseline on? There are metric numbers for everything. Like SQL Server has file stats, perfmon statistics, weight stats, queries. There's like six gajillion statistics. And when I was a database administrator, I would always try to build monitoring metrics for after I got bit by something. Like if I had a blocking problem, I'm like, oh man, I, I didn't think to capture those metrics. I should probably start capturing those. Then I would have a storage problem where all of a sudden my disks froze up. And I'm like, oh, I should probably think to go catch those. And I was always working backwards trying to capture the problem that I was happening yesterday. There's a way easier way to do it with open source tools. And I'm going to show you what it is with SP Blitz first. Let's go pop over into a virtual machine and go take a look. So let's move over here over to remote desktop. So I'm up on a SQL Server 2017 instance, but everything that I'm going to show you here is totally open source, works on SQL Server 2008 forward. All currently supported versions of SQL Server are uh, totally compatible with this. So SP Blitz first is a query that I wrote because I was so sick and tired of people calling me going, are you doing anything on the SQL Server right now? Can you just go take a look? Something seems kind of weird. Can you go look at the SQL Server? And I got so sick and tired of people asking me, I'm like, why don't you go look? Why don't I give you a stored procedure where you can go check and see? Now, the, the basic mode, I just ran it in expert mode, but I'm going to go run it in basic mode, which is what I uh, had my end users go run it in. The way that this works is it takes a snapshot of a whole bunch of SQL Server system tables, dynamic management views. It waits for five seconds and then takes another snapshot, and it tells you what happened in that time range and what you should worry about. So, for example, here's the prioritized list of what the basic mode returns. You have high CPU utilization on a server. Right now, your CPU is running about 90, 98%. Here's what your wait stats look like. Here's how many batch requests a second you're doing CPU. And these are prioritized. If there was somebody who was taking a backup or if there was a long-running query blocking others, that would float to the top of the list. Now, this is really cool, but it doesn't help me for baselines, because what I really want to know is what do all my metrics look like over time? Well, that's where the expert mode comes in in this. So with expert mode, when you run it, it still does the same thing. It takes a, a snapshot of a bunch of stuff, waits for five seconds, then takes another snapshot and tells you what happened over that time range. But it also returns way more data so, for example, it tells you the queries that were running at the start of the uh, session. It gives you the same headline news result set. It gives you wait stats in that, you know, 10 second time span there. What wait types were your top weights? How long did you spend waiting on them? What was the average milliseconds per wait? 
And I know that a lot of people are confused by weight stats because there's all kinds of different obscure weight stats and the description of them never really matches what the weight type name is. So I give you links in here over to Paul Randall's excellent weight stats library over at SQLSkills.com. So you can copy paste that out and go learn more exactly about what that weight stat is. So all of this stuff, weight stats, it gives you file stats. So for example, the top files that you read and wrote to during that time span. Here we did over on TempDB, looks like in the log file was the only thing that we wrote to. We did three writes because we're in the write section. We wrote about less than a gig and our storage is responding in about 53 milliseconds on this file. Then, if you go further down, there's a list of every perfmon counter for SQL Server that changed during this time span, plus stuff about the plan cache, depending on what parameters you put in. Now, what this is really useful for is for right now. If you run it for right now, it'll tell you what's going on right now on the server, but again, that's not what a baseline is either. What I really need is I need a bunch of these metrics gathered over time to tell me what's normal on a SQL server. And that is where you can run it in an agent job. I'm going to go over to my SQL server 2017 server, go into my agent jobs, and I've got a job here called log blitz, blitz first to a table. If you go over to the steps in this job, what I do here is I run SP Blitz first, and it's got a set of parameters for where you want to write the data out to. What database do you want to write it to? What schema do you want to write it in? And what do you want the table names to be called? Remember just a second ago how I showed you expert mode and it had a whole bunch of result sets? It had weight stats, file stats, perfmon counters. Well, you can log all of those to disk. That's exactly what we're doing here. So it's got one for the headline news result set. It's got another one for your file stats, which ones you're doing reads and writes to, how slow they are, your perfmon stats, and more. Now, the way that I like to set this up is I like to schedule it to run every 15 minutes around the clock. Now, is it zero overhead? No, it's going to take some time when it runs. You can look at on my server, if I look at the history of this job, go over here, it's been running every 15 minutes around the clock. I can go over here and I can see what the duration was. Now I'm not gonna lie to you, so you can see it's taking like seven to 30 seconds depending on how heavy my server was loaded. I'm not gonna lie to you, it does take workload. Just like if you want your car to go really, really fast, if you're a race car driver, if you're a Formula One car driver, you should take the speedometer out. You notice if you ever look at race cars, they don't have speedometers in them because the speedometer is weight and it slows the car down. The idea of a really fast Formula One car is it has as little weight as possible. Formula One cars don't co care how fast they're going because there's no speed limit on the Formula One track, and they have to go as fast as they possibly can. The driver's in there holding her foot down all the way to the floor, going as fast as she possibly can. It's not like she's going to save up a little and go a little bit slower sometimes. Similarly, if you want your SQL server to go as fast as possible, don't monitor it. Don't have any monitoring whatsoever. Now, of course, you won't know how fast you're going. You won't know how you can't go faster, but there is an overhead to monitoring your SQL servers and capturing baselines just is what it is. Now, if you want to lower that overhead, that's where third-party monitoring tools come in, stuff like SQL Grease, where they've already tuned their queries in order to go faster. I just haven't put that much work into mine, to be honest. So this thing's running every 15 minutes, and it's been writing its data to disk. I can go see in the DBA tools database, here are the tables that it's going and creating. So let's go take a look at some of the contents of those. Let's take file stats, for example. If I say select star from uh, DBO blitz first file stats, and I'm going to order by check date descending and show you the schema of this little fella. What we have in here is every 15 minutes, we're logging the samples into this table. 
It's got the server name in there. The reason why I do that is that I want you to be able to consolidate all of your SQL servers into one database. You could do that with linked server queries, replication, log shipping, SSIS, however you want to centralize this data. Then you can slice and dice it by server. Tells you the date, the database ID, the file that's involved. You can see the exact file name, how big it was on disk, how long SQL Server spent waiting on reads, how many reads it did, how many bytes it wrote. Although, here's the crappy part, those numbers are cumulative since the last restart. I really wish that SQL Server separated things out in, say, 15-minute intervals so that I could check those things over 15-minute intervals. But I can do that, and I do with a view by default, SP Blitz first automatically creates views as well that give you the deltas between the, the prior sample and this sample. So if I go in and look at deltas, which is the view for file stats, here I can see at, say, 16 o'clock at 4 o'clock in the afternoon in the Stack Overflow database, the size was this large. It hasn't grown since the last sample 900 seconds ago. It's about 15 minutes. Here's how slow my reads were during that time. Here's how many reads I did. Here's how many megabytes I read. I can continue to scroll across, see how many writes I did. Same thing. This is really useful if I want to narrow things down to just one particular database and see what things have been like over time. Or maybe I want to see when a file is growing. So check this out. What if I say where database name equals temp db, db, and size on disk megabytes growth is greater than zero. I want to go find out when temp db grew. So this will tell me. Here, I can see that it grew. Each of these data files grew by about a gig and a half yesterday at about 1030 p.m., and it took some time for me to do my reads during that time. And I was also slow on the write size, too. Holy smokes. Someone was reading or writing like 7 gigs to each of these tempdb data files. Is that normal? Well, now I can see with this historical baseline. It's easier for me to see. So what else was happening around that same time? Well, remember that we're gathering all kinds of stuff. We're not just gathering file stats. We're also gathering weight stats, perfmon stats. So if I want to see what was happening around that time, I might say, let's go look at other DMVs. Let's see, select star from DBO Blitz first, uh, where i will say check date is greater than or equal to. And I'm just going to go a little bit earlier in time. Instead of saying exactly 1030, maybe I'll say 20 o'clock. And check date is less than or equal to. And we'll go a little bit after that as well. And then order by check date descending. Show me what happened around that time range. Now I can go back and see what was happening around those times. Looks like no problems were found at 1330, 13, or 10, uh, 1330, 2330, 2315. I can scroll down and whoa, we have query problems. Someone erased the plan cache around here. Backup IO, I had high weight stats from backups. Uh, someone, again, blew out my memory. Oh, and here's a log file that was growing around this same time. This is all interesting headline news kind of analysis, but then I can go deeper and I can say, all right, what did my different perfmon counters look like during that time? If I want to go look at, say, blitz first perfmon stats, deltas, I can go look at all my perfmon counters during that time, see which ones were going up or down. Or what queries were running? Blitz cache. Because SP Blitz first, one of the parameters that you can pass in there is you can have it call SP Blitz cache in order to log what queries were the most resource intensive around the same time. 
Now, it's not perfect because sometimes the plans will go in and out of cache fairly quickly, or else they may be things that are encrypted, for example. But I can also sort not just by dates, but I can sort by all of the columns that come out of SP Blitz cache. For example, maybe I want to look at which ones ran the longest total duration. Let's give that a shot. So I can say, show me the queries that ran the longest by duration in that time range. And here, if I look at some of those metrics, I'm going to go over to the duration column. Ah, I have one query that ran way longer than the others. I can go in and see all kinds of metrics about it, when it was created, what its plan cache looked like. Now, I can see information about the plan, like if there were warnings from SP Blitz Index. And I can even go further across. And there's the plan cache, it's, or there's the plan itself. Here's the text of the query, and here's the query plan. So I can go click on it and start to troubleshoot, even if it's been vanished from the plan cache by now. Because this is what always happens to me. If someone calls and goes, why was the server slow yesterday at 10.30 p.m.? Like, what do I look like? Psychic? Do I look like the amazing Kreskin here? How am I supposed to know? Well, logging this stuff to a table is the thing that helps me find out. So you get all of this just by running an agent job to go log SP Blitz first to a table. And so I've got that agent job set up on here. Here's the set of the, this text of the script. Now, and this is in the documentation too. I'll show you here. I might as well fire open the web page and go show you where this is at. If you search for SP Blitz first, there's all kinds of stuff about how to get it from our site, the source code for it, how to learn to use it, and also a Power BI dashboard that helps you visualize the uh, your baselines. If I go to, uh, I'm just going to go to brenozar.com because I'm lazy. If I go to brenozar.com, up here at scripts, there's the Power BI dashboard for DBAs. If I go click on that, there's instructions on how to go use it. It's totally free, and it's a Power BI desktop front end for this data. Power BI desktop is also totally free from Microsoft. It's got the steps on exactly how you create this agent job and set it up every, uh, every 15 minutes. Now, one thing I do want to note in here, by default, there's an output table retention days parameter, and it defaults to seven days. So what it does is every time that it runs, it'll go delete data that's older seven days in this table. If you want to change that, if you want to keep more or less history in there, all you have to do is add that parameter to your job. So here, I'll go change it on mine, come back over to the job. I can say output table retention days is 30, let's say. I know the next question you're going to ask is how large is the database going to become? Again, I'm not psychic. Depends on your query workloads, depends on how many execution plans we end up catching, and the size of those query plans, because I know some of y'all like to join all of your tables together in every single piece of T-SQL. So this is really easy. All you have to do is set it up to run every 15 minutes on your server. And presto, there are baselines. Now you can go start splunking through all of your perfmon counters, all of your weight stats, all of your file stats, and you can see them back over the last seven days. So that when someone comes running in and says performance is terrible today as opposed to yesterday, you can look back and see what was going on over those times. And you can even go to them and say, no, actually, performance is the same. It's just that you're trying to run a really crappy query that you've never run before. And now I can see exactly what that query is. So today's webcast is short because I'm going to let you all go free and start uh, spelunking around adding this to your own servers. It really is just that easy. Go get SP Blitz first. Go install it on your servers to run every 15 minutes. And then go start looking at the data. Uh, go over there to brenozar.com, Click scripts and click the Power BI dashboard for DBAs. That has the agent job set up. And uh, go have fun. Adios, y'all.